Thank you. Thank you to everybody from Joel and from the web, I suppose. So, uh, I'm a physicist uh, at uh, in education, but uh, since uh, 20 years uh, I have been studying science as a social product uh, with a growing attention to communication. And in the last 10 years, I've been studying uh, the knowledge society, the so-called knowledge society, that to me, in my opinion, is a new species in human history. Um, why such a, a, an intervention in this uh, conference? Because uh, the question I wanted to answer with you is uh, why open science? Uh, in two more specific questions. Why open science uh, matters, quality of science? And the most sub subtle question is why open science matters, quality of society? This is a, a quick index of my presentation. Uh, knowledge, because uh, we have two options, uh, an idea a bit ancient of knowledge. Uh, to me, uh, knowledge is the human dimension, but uh, a lot of disciplines are studying knowledge, of course, uh, with many, many names. Uh, some are calling uh, culture, other, other, uh, with other terms. Terms uh, the most specific, in my opinion, is knowledge. So we are entering the most specifically human society in human history. Uh, but what kind of knowledge? Uh, it is a, a social definition of knowledge that I want to show you, to propose. Uh, and now, what's the role of science within such a specific social species as knowledge society is? And what about the model? Oh, the human dimension, okay. But what does it mean? Uh, we have to do uh, a little typology of knowledge. Uh, Letting entry within this definition also forms of knowledge that usually we don't consider within social studies of science and within studying knowledge, scientific knowledge. But they are very, very close. And I will try to show you that if we uh, let also other meanings of knowledge, other forms within this the same technology of knowledge enter under our fabric, uh, our problem of opening science, suddenly we find that open science is the clue of a, a, an open society, an open knowledge. This is a very, very quick typology of knowledge. Oh, first of all, knowledge is not just information, of course. This is not enough to have some data to have knowledge of that data. Uh, we have to know uh, its uh, relevance, its appropriateness, its meaning, uh, and also from what social field it comes out of, uh, and also other things that uh, I will show you. Uh, in this epoch, 
we have a huge information, but to my opinion, scarce knowledge. We are in scarcity of knowledge uh, suitable to treat so much information, and more than this, uh, is so important uh, resource as knowledge in the field, knowledge society. Uh, this apology is made uh, with uh, a polarity, focalized on the spectrum, in three dimensions intellectual, practical, objectivity. Uh, intellectual, mainly ideas, and when we think about uh, scientific knowledge, we are thinking first of all as ideas, scientific ideas, theories, laws. But we know very well that behind uh, intellectual ideas, we have beliefs that lie in the daily life, uh, and also implicators that are more soft beliefs, uh, more easily changeable than beliefs are. But we have also a lot of practical knowledges, both incorporated or collective. Uh, incorporated, I mean, uh, in my body. Uh, the, I mean, the know-how. Know-how both uh, with my hands, but also with my mind. How to treat information. We have also collective practical knowledges. Uh, these collective are, uh, you can see easily this, the difference, incorporated in this lane knowledge we activate to drive a bike. But if we are going to bike uh, in Amsterdam or in Alangi or in central Milan, where Unfortunately, I live. Uh, you have to activate a lot of other knowledges, very practical, but they are not incorporated in my body, uh, or not as much, but they are collected. I have to look to synchronize my movements with the tram, with the bus, with other people uh, crossing the street uh, with the red. Uh, uh, or not, etc. Et uh, but the last kind of knowledge is, is very, very often forgotten thinking about knowledge. And me, my opinion, uh, it is very important. Encapsulating this knowledge, encapsulating it in objects okay? inside this computer, there is a lot of uh, knowledge that is uh, just at the level of ideas of some uh, some people who, uh, who built it, designed and built it and sent it to, to this hall. Uh, these were ideas, but fortunately, I don't have to unpack this knowledge to use it. I don't need to be a, a softwareist, an expert of PC, to use PC usefully to my needs. Uh, why? Because it is encapsulated and I trust on a lot of experts, a lot of anonymous agencies that guarantee me that the knowledge encapsulated inside this computer exactly do what I need it does. Uh, we have also cultural views that are knowledge encapsulated from generations of history and also in the environment, 
also in the, uh, in the natural world by a lot of generations, we see the breadth knowledge sedimented by future generations. Okay, that's the meaning of knowledge. I will deal with it. Big data use theory. As much we have data, as we need a strong, a, a strong theory beyond the easy philosophical shortcuts that everybody of you know from history of biology. Lose time on this, but just think about the biases in our research, in our production of knowledge, not necessary uh, when we are doing scientific research, but also when we are doing scientific research. We are, do, we are researching following a confirmation bias. Uh, we have a theory later that is well known by philosophy of science of the whole uh, 20th century. There is a holy of controls. I mean that every time we control an hypothesis, we never control just that hypothesis, but just an arrangement of theory, hypothesis, etc. And in few minutes I just just to give you a sketch of the complexity behind this third, third control. Uh, and also what counts for an event? <coughs> Depends on the background taken for granted of the researcher or in the more extended definition of knowledge I'm using, uh, the background is taken for granted of the subject. Of all the controls, well done. I mean, uh, you can acquire an hypothesis. Uh, the main hypothesis is controlled uh, together with initial conditions, auxiliary hypothesis about instruments. Check this out by this clause. I mean, other effects that could interfere with the effects I am trying to isolate within the universe. I have to take it as an instrument. Uh, and then this is, there is the event. What to me, to my opinion, to my deontological responsibility, uh, is the event that uh, I register. So if the control goes wrong, what of these hypotheses? goes wrong, has to be changed. There is not a unique answer. Uh, it depends. We have to try, we have to gain a consensus. This is the moment in which uh, the social constitution of science becomes evident. But since now, uh, every society was present in the background, in our uh, relevance, in our, also our division of labor. What is relevant for an anthropologist is not what is relevant for a sociologist or for an economist, etc. But the, the events are events. Uh, and that, and they don't know how it is doing a multidisciplinary or an interdisciplinary study, we have to deal with our divisions uh, that are over-impressed or negative, but doesn't know such conditions. Theory is not a sum of data, a 
And that's the reason for huge data, huge information, mean, uh, huge, high, strong theory, uh, under the foundation of data, science, technology, and creativity. Uh, and while dealing with education, uh, it is very important to communicate with youngsters uh, that uh, science is a creative uh, challenge, is a creative work. Uh, creativity uh, follows heuristics, some studies are done. Uh, this is what we have to control, not from the data, if our theory, our creativity, our social agents, our cultural feelings, passions, possibilities, etc., are working well. Not, we have not to ask naturally if we are working well. Uh, we have to gain a consensus over what is working well uh, in this period, in this societal arrangement uh, when such problems are under the line. However, I have to, uh, to put the, the stone against not only objectivism, but also to, against relativism. That is the Opinion and mistake uh, very frequently done by sociologists and not the science particularly. Because we can study humans who are making science. Of course. We can do science of how our theories, our data, our science depends on us. Us as individuals as members of society, as human beings. This is exactly what sociologists say should do and say uh, reflexively. Of course, the sociologist of science, uh, when he is going to, to put one feet before the other, uh, has to reflect on who is he, from where it comes, uh, where does he want to go, what is, how he is constructing the data he is going to use. The second point in my index is what kind of knowledge, and the answer is social epistemic. What is social epistemic? It's an old term, but with a modern, sorry, a contemporary, uh, after modernity, uh, term, adjective, source. Uh, knowledge as uh, understanding through communication. And so we have to open, also peer review, that somebody called uh, full review. And open science is also an insurance about uh, how our peer review, our review, our science is. What kind of science? Why open science matters to study of science? Knowledge not just in understanding. Not only knowledge is not just in Knowledge is also not just understanding. And this is the difference between understanding and knowledge. Oh, understanding, a general understanding, maybe a very lovely drawer, maybe not knowledge. I, I discovered something, I, I locked it in my drawer. It is an understanding. It is not a knowledge. Oh, wow, such a definition, particular, or knowledge. Etymology. Etymology. Etymology of cognoscentia, from which comes uh, in a lot of languages. 
English cognizance. Tennis court, I love that English, but English language is not my mother tongue. Also in English, there, there are terms derived directly and indirectly as well, but also directly from cognition. Cognition, Italian, conoscenza. French connaissance, French connaissance, connaissance, etc. Uh, three European roots are behind cognoscenza. Uh, an understanding, you know, uh, as uh, in English, ignorance, uh, Latin, noscere, conoscere. Uh, school, there is a, a being shed in, uh, in English. But also, it is the cum, as in cum, in English, uh, in Latin, cum. So, an understanding that is made in common with somebody to distinguish something relevant, of course, in our experience. This is knowledge. So, knowledge is practical. Knowledge uh, is social. It's relevant, socially relevant. And giving knowledge is shared understanding to practically distinguish. That's the reason why an entire society kind of works around the knowledge, not around just a theory. Or just huge data, but something very, very human. Oh, more precise. Uh, I use the term academic. Uh, who has to share knowledge? In antiquity, it's saying that every rational body, of course, and who doesn't share it is not a rational animal, of course. But Aristotle discovered, discovered another side of knowledge uh, within the typology. I just show you there, are, there is a lot of endoxa. Uh, the endoxa is the background, the taken for granted, the established over which we build our theories. It is judged, called better, judged by those more experts of us. This is the definition of us. In modern science, who has to share knowledge? Oh, peers. Some peers. Not everyone. Some peers. Uh, those within uh, the societies. Ballet societies, uh, French society, or all these okay, but not everybody. In sciences, in, in the knowledge society, every seat has to share these kind of knowledge. It is the shared, socially shared. It is the, this is the definition of knowledge, and that's a problem. That's the the rule we have to follow to understand that open science, open science is not just to have good science, but it's a good society. Or who will you be your friend, etc., etc. And you are very easily can find a lot of green things, things, things or about the uh, uh, poor review. Theory, okay? Uh, open science is difficult to be realized, of course, but not science is no more good enough. Good enough to do what? To have an entire society working around such knowledge. Uh, I reported here some uh, claims by the editor of the Journal of the American Medical Association, Brain Cancer Research, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, they, uh, every, they have been dealing with uh, not mistakes, not 
just bias, not errors of reviewers, but with dynamics of consensus building that are uh, affected by cronyism, by bias, by uh, professional deformation, habitus received from our background, our education, our training, uh, our doing the same job for tens years. But uh, my opinion, they are not mistakes. They are way in which we are trying to share knowledge. Maybe strong thing. It is not a good manner to share knowledge today. Maybe one time uh, all worked well, but now in a knowledge society, it can no more be the manner up in the knowledge society. Oh, the illusion of bibliometry uh, is a massacre in Italian uh, in these years. Speak uh, about biology. Uh, all the uh, evaluation, researchers, evaluation, university, disciplines, etc., etc., uh, deal with either theory or biology. Biology is not more objective than theory, it's just defined as either the review. You uh, try to uh, trace the review made by peers that read and published papers citing or not citing your own paper. So, bibliometry uh, is not more objective than peer review, it's just an under peer review, a kind of peer review. Also, the growing course of journals, either for publication and for, for access, are based on barriers to access to knowledge. <laughs> so, open science is a, a, a challenging uh, such. Difficult, very difficult, but close science is no more good enough. So, theory, who review why, uh, just uh, Least I don't want to tease you with uh, too many details, but first of all, we have a paradox. Too much expert to be equal or to be open minded may be a limit, limitation. To be too expert to evaluate a paper. Of course, if you don't know anything about the subject, how can you judge it? But even if you have, if, if you are too much expert, uh, maybe you are not the best peer reviewer of the paper. So the problem is the key problem is how to select peers and how to manage controversies. Uh, in, in our experience, we have a lot, uh, each one of us, had a lot of uh, examples of very, very different manners to manage controversies about peers. Mm -hmm. Some jurors accept if peers are uh, controversial because uh, it creates controversy. So maybe a lot of people will read it. Maybe we will, they also will correct, but to me, it's a good, a good job to have a lot of readers on my journal. But other journals uh, manage a completely different controversy. Oh, if two peers are not uh, in agreement, uh, we don't publish. No, I'm going to
to, I, I'm looking for a third way. Or I decide, I, me, the editor, say, but I don't publish it. What's the, the better, what's the best journey which follows which policy publication? I don't know, it depends. Uh, what about cronyism? Journals that are growing, flourishing, because there are a lot of cronies that unite uh, against others, of course. But these are not mistaken errors, uh, things that doesn't, that don't have to happen. But is how. So we have to open science in order that all these manner in which science happens is under the eyes of everybody, under the light of sun. So a lot of other should oh, this is one of my best. Are you sure he might speak better than what? And when uh, there is a young uh, uh, researcher that send uh, uh, a paper and two qualified senior researchers uh, judge it uh, as uh, not uh, suitable for the publication, who is uh, right? Who is right? It depends. Uh, of course, you say you are too much into the scientific value. What about the databases? The databases from which we uh, extract data about uh, citations, uh, etc. Publish or perish of quality or quantity. Why don't you put a limit? Well, publication, of course. A limit. To public publications uh, of research. Okay, please, just two pages each year or the next five years if you are uh, at the beginning of the career. Huh? Okay, two, two pages, everybody can, can read two pages of every young researcher. You should uh, start publishing huge papers huge books or quasi-books uh, often uh, happens, uh, may be very, very difficult. So you have to, uh, to see how many pages has been written and not how good knowledge has been produced. Yes, okay. Open time. That's the first answer of uh, my two questions. But science within social change, we have also to deal with it. And we have uh, to think uh, quickly about three revolutions we already have uh, passed. Revolution of consciousness, of agriculture, of industry, and now the first, the fourth revolution, the revolution that are uh, killing us into the knowledge society, is made of two different uh, aspects the knowledge economy of the citizen society. But it is just one revolution. Beg your pardon, but just a few words about uh, social theory. When we deal with the social phenomena, we have three kinds of object, theoretical object, we are confronted with. We have individuals, we have society, 
ways in, in which individual worlds live. And then some knowledge, meanings that individuals find they change. Looking at what other people live together with them in, within the same society, yeah. what are they doing? The meaning of what you, thereby other people, are doing uh, to, my, to me come from knowledge. It is not just a, a product of me as an individual, or of us as a society, but comes uh, from a past work of many generations generation and also very often for many societies think to etymology of conoscenza of knowledge. Yes. Each term has behind itself a lot of history that doesn't depend on me, on you, on other people sharing with us the same contemporary society but from the past. This is the dimension I need knowledge. I, we need knowledge. It is a diagram, a logical diagram, okay, logical. We cannot uh, this suppose to have an individual without a society, without knowledge, or a society without individuals, without knowledge, or knowledge without individuals, without society. Okay? Dealing with social phenomena, as a sociologist, we have always three logic bricks the individual, the society, the nation, or the nations. Okay? Each social phenomena has three dimensions. Okay. So what about what about the knowledge society? Knowledge society is made of what? Individual, society, and knowledge. But with some specificities. Individual is a knowledge citizen, a citizen empowered with knowledge with knowledge, with a social epistemic, a shared uh, society is not just a society generically, generically speaking, but it is a global knowledge society. For the first time of human history, it is a global society in which knowledge is not only one of the resources most important is the most important. Why? Because it gives values to each other economic factor, to each other social behavior. It's knowledge that assigns meanings to behaviors, to objects, to money. around knowledge. So the primary field is the field in which we, each time, are working with knowledge, generating knowledge, exchanging knowledge. This primary field is always in interaction with the whole global society. We have community of practice and networks that go, that go through every primary field, connecting with, connecting individuals across global, global society. Everybody is a generation of knowledge, participate also to institutionalization of 
knowledge, sharing, diffusion, communication in the restricted meaning of the term communication because in the enlarged meaning. Communication is the whole circulation of knowledge within the whole knowledge society. And also socialization. Socialization of knowledge means two different things. That each knowledge go through society to citizens, to every citizen. Maybe just in the form of incarceration. Maybe in the form of education. And any other form of diffusion. Okay? And, but also, every citizen is socialized to knowledge. Acquires, acquires that knowledge that is diffused, institutionalized within his or her own society. Acquires in order to give meanings to human behavior, objects, money, symbols, objects, etc. We can we can call internal communication the upper health of the circulation of knowledge and external communication the other. But what is real, eh, in commerce, is the raw communication of knowledge. And this is exactly the process that let knowledge society work. I don't want to go through each phase, uh, but open science has uh, at the end also not, not only to better science, but also to better society. Why? Because, because science and democracy <coughs> has to go, has to come together. Because science needs good citizens beyond technology. Otherwise, a knowledge society, if citizens are not good enough with knowledge, with knowledge production, sharing, socialization, etc., etc., uh, we fall into technocracy. But also democracy makes good knowledge, otherwise it falls into magic. Uh, so common sense applied with Gregory one of the people, uh, one of the best, the best uh, definitions of science we know uh, is also the counterpart of knowledge as means and ends. Not just means to become richer or safer or for a well-being. But it is also an end for humans. This is development, okay? Governance, knowledge governance oriented to the full development of the democratic society based on science, uh, needs open science to society, but also to open society to science. This scenario is still new and more and more challenging. Uh, something just to, to think to concrete or uh, almost concrete things. Uh, Web of Things uh, and the IP conversion in a three dimensional three dimensional print. How do three dimensional print change the logistics? the distributions uh, of goods, etc. Et uh, in the next future, uh, our most curious innovation, however, are to make it today a new anthropology of the future, with a resolution withdrawn from a past one 
a past one that is vain, that is past. It's not, it is no more good enough to deal with complexity. Uh, our uh, knowledge uh, is building day by day with it. 